Today we're gonna learn how to dodge and burn in Lightroom. If you really wanna sculpt out the face without having to move to Photoshop and do that really quickly, this is the video for you. And when we say quickly, we don't compromise with quality. So today I'm gonna share with you some tips and tricks from all sorts of things like color shifts, intensity, and if none of this makes sense, do not worry. We'll start at rock bottom. So without any further ado, let's get started. First off, let's talk about what is dodging and burning. It's simply brightening and darkening certain areas of the photo to add dimension to it. Doesn't make sense? Let me show you an example, but wait, we were talking about Lightroom, right? I just wanted to show you an example. So for example, I make a circle and I fill it up with gray. Okay, I choose 50% gray and fill it up like that. Okay, now suppose the light is coming from the right top right just like this if I just show you light is coming just like this and this is looking flat now dodging and burning as I said is brightening and darkening certain areas of the object or the image to add dimension to it so this is flat if I go ahead take a brush create a new layer just above this make it a little softer decrease the flow and Paint this area, let's clip it, paint this area a little brighter, just like that. And paint this area a little darker. What does this become? This becomes a sphere, right? This was a circle before, have a look. This is flat. Now when I brighten and darken certain parts of the image, it becomes a sphere, it adds dimension to the photo. And that's what the theory behind dodging and burning is. Just remember this, if you wanna take away just one thing from this video, this is it. Anything, and I quote, anything which is protruding in the direction of light has to be brightened. Anything which is away from the direction of light has to be darkened. I'm gonna repeat that again for you. Anything which is protruding towards the direction of light has to be brightened. Anything away from the direction of light has to be darkened. So this area is in the direction of light. So we brighten this area. This area is away from the light. So we darkened that area. Also remember that anything that you wanna take forward in the direction of light, brighten that. Anything that you wanna take backwards from the direction of light, darken that. So here we are in Lightroom with this beautiful picture of Amanda and this photo was submitted by Jim Smith from James for Photography. Thank you so much Jim for this photo. And just so you know, Lightroom does have its own brush for dodging and burning, but we are not gonna use them. So for dodging and burning, of course, we're gonna use something called the adjustment brush. The shortcut to which is K, K for kite. Okay, press K to get to adjustment brush. Now it does have a dodge brush and a burn brush. And by the way, dodging means lightning, burning means darkening, okay? So it's kind of something which I personally don't like. You might wanna try this out, but I create my own brush. So first of all, let's go ahead and select burn. And let's see what's happening here. Burning means darkening. And by default, it decreases the exposure by 0.3. What are we gonna do? Let's create our own brush. And in our own brush, let's set the exposure to minus 0.3. Five. Okay, by the way, these are my personal preferences. You might go ahead and create your own brush, the one that suits you. But the basic formula and the principle remains the same. Exposure has to go down. Now when you paint, if you want a little more flexibility, here's what you need to do. Let's zoom in quite a bit. Say one is to four, maybe one is to three. And decrease the exposure then decrease something called the flow. Set the flow to somewhere around 25, okay? Now, if you wanna have more control over the softness of the brush, flow is something that you would want to reduce. So what is flow 25%? Let me just show you, let me just demonstrate that for you. For example, if the exposure was minus four, total all the way to the left, and the flow was 100, look what's happening if I paint here. It becomes completely dark. Now. If the flow was, say, 20%, then I will have to paint five times to get this kind of darkness. One, two, three, four, five. Maybe even more than that, okay? If the opacity a little more, I might have to paint a little less to get this kind of darkness. 
So that's how flow works. So let's go back, controller command Z or Z, the way you pronounce it. Let's go back and delete all these. We didn't want to do it. Let's delete this, this brush altogether because we spend a lot of time just painting. Select the brush and all you have to do, press the delete key and it deletes. So we need to create a new brush, select new, take the exposure to minus 0.5 and then the flow to around 25 and start painting on the areas which are away from the direction of light. So the light is coming from this direction, from the left. So we would paint in these areas which are facing away from the direction of light. And one of the shortcuts in Lightroom is that if you're using a mouse, you just have to scroll to make the brush bigger or smaller. Make sure the feather is all the way to 100. Make the brush bigger and start painting over the areas facing away from the direction of light. And since the flow is low, you have the flexibility of painting more times and have more control over the softness of the brush, of the strokes that you paint. So just paint over these areas. Paint the shadows. Don't just ignore them. Shadows are important. Okay. Just like that. That's looking fine. To bring out the nose, we need to paint here. Under the nose. So let's go ahead and have a look at the before and after. So if we just zoom out a bit, maybe one is to four. And then if we turn off the brush, to turn off the brush, here is the switch, okay? So let's go ahead, before, after. Look how beautifully a dimension it adds to the face. Now you can go ahead keep on painting and also what's interesting about this feature is that you can erase the extra areas if you want to just really carve out the face you can press and hold alter option and when you press that you see the cursor change you see the brush change into a minus instead of a plus now you can go ahead and paint out the areas which you had painted extra and this is one of the best techniques to refine what you have painted just like carving out a statue and many of us even I personally do that I paint a little extra and then use this to really make the selection even better now when you hold alter option the flow is going to change so set the flow to somewhere around 40 or whatever you like and just delete the areas remove the areas softly which you had painted extra okay I would like to delete this area just a little bit and if you want to see where exactly you have painted, because right now the exposure is a little mild, you have to press a key called O. Oh, this actually shows you the mask where you have painted. Or you can just even check this, okay? Check this out or check this in, okay? If you check this out, this doesn't show, it only shows you the effect. If you check this in, it shows you the mask. Then you can erase it from the extra area. So this is the extra area, press and hold Alt, just erase it from there, okay? And we did a pretty good job. So let's go ahead and press O. O is the shortcut, just so you know. And right now you're seeing this anchor point of the brush. If you don't want to see that, if you don't want to see that point, press H. And H stands for hide. H again, it shows you again. Now we as humans always tend to get carried away. So we need to make the effect a little bit softer. And to do that, all you have to do, increase the exposure just a little bit. Maybe let's go minus 0 0.4 and that's fine. And this is what? This is the burn brush. Now, have a look at it. When we darkened particular areas of the image, particular areas of her face, it became a little bit grayish. So what you see right now is a color shift. It's not looking right. In this image, it's not so much, but in other images, you will face that. You might face that. So how to add a color tinge to it? Simple. There is a color option inside of the brush, okay? So all you have to do, click on that cross and select a color which is matching the most. So let me give you a tip. What Here's what I do. So if you move left and right, the hue changes. If you move up and down, the saturation changes. I'm going to say that again. If you move left and right, the hue changes. If you move up and down, the saturation changes. So first of all, take this point all the way to the up. Okay, this might sound stupid, but take this point all the way up and then see which one is matching the most. So here I see that this color is matching the most. And once you have selected that color, from that color, just move downwards in the same line. So for me, I guess 
this is the most natural color and just close it. There we go. This added a tinge to it and now it looks natural. Have a look at the before and after. So this is the before. If we turn this off, this is the after. Now it's time for us to lighten certain areas or in other words, dodge. So let's create a new brush. We don't want to paint with this brush. So let's go ahead and click on new. Otherwise it will just paint with the same brush new. And this time take the exposure as you have guessed plus 0.5. And the flow will be the same around 25 is good and brighten up areas which are in the direction of light which are facing the light so this cheek area just like that forehead simple the nose the line here press full to look at the mask Sometimes it's easier to paint with the mask because you have an idea where exactly you're painting. Then you can always go back and turn off the mask and control the exposure. We are seeing some areas which are missing. Okay. And that's the advantage of turning on the mask and having a better look at where exactly we are painting. So just to brighten up a little area there. And there you go. Turn off the mask, press O. Have a look. This is quite too much. So what we would do, we would just reduce it. Maybe go 0 0.3 or 0 0.25. Have a look at the before and after. So this is the before. Let's press H to hide this and then have a look at the before and after. Before, after makes a ton of difference. Let's have a closer look. So we would go to one is to four and have a closer look. So before, after. Now you can play with it as much as you want because all this is non-destructive. You can always press H again, go back to the burn and just change it or paint extra, control the exposure, do whatever you want. And that's pretty much how to dodge and burn in Lightroom. Just remember one thing, anything which is protruding in the direction of light has to be brightened. Anything which is facing the light has to be brightened. Anything which is going away from the direction of light, facing away from the direction of light has to be darkened. I hope this video helped you and if it did, make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe, ring the bell so that you guys don't miss any other future tips, tricks and tutorials. I'll see you guys in the next one. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating. Oh, yeah. no, no, no.